First, I should say that I like the concept of a 5x5 program and its straightforward and trackable system of progressive overload. Currently, I'm doing a dumbbell version and enjoying it, but everything has its pros and cons. Some of the criticisms against 5x5s are unfounded and others are valid. We'll review these today to help you decide if this training system is right for you. The critique I hear the most is unbalanced volume, too much leg work and not enough upper body. Rows, bench, and overhead presses are done three times in two weeks, whereas squats are done six times. There is a little crossover between overhead press and bench, mainly in the front delt and triceps. For the back, you should have both a horizontal and a vertical pull in your program. Strongless does have a couple of exercises you can add after the eight-week mark that help fix this problem. They do it for a different reason, but we'll get into these exercises in a bit. There's nothing wrong with starting with five movements perfecting them first, then, once you have them mastered, adding in more exercises. I've heard that it's too intense for beginners, and this workout does get intense, and it isn't easy. This is why it's critical if you're new to start light and perfect form. Even videotape yourself to ensure you're doing the exercises correctly. Most new lifters don't train hard enough. 5 by 5s have you increasing the amount of weight you lift every workout, so it's inevitable as long as you keep adding weight, you'll end up training hard and intense, making it essential to take deloads as the program prescribes. Joint pain can be a side effect of lifting heavy and a risk with 5x5s. This can happen because our form starts to break down and we end up moving out of the plane of motion we've developed our strength in. Adding accessory work to build strength in different planes will help. Increasing the number of warm-up sets is another option. A couple of notes on exercise selection. Traditionally, strong lifts are done with a low bar squat and a pendle row. I'd use different exercise variations. Nothing wrong with a high bar squat. And in my own dumbbell 5x5, I could see beginners starting with a goblet squat. Once they've outgrown that, move on to a bench squat and then go to a heel elevated suitcase squat for greater range of motion. Occasionally changing the exercise variation can also help protect us from joint pain. With rows, doing a traditional bent over row, maintaining your spine in a neutral position with less body English is easier for a beginner and reduces the risk of injury. One of the strange criticisms I hear of 5x5s is eventually you'll plateau. And the answer is yes. Find me a program where you never hit a plateau. Such a plan doesn't exist. What you need is systems to help you get past these sticking points. Tracking your rest times helps with this. When you're stuck, Try increasing the time between sets. If typically you rest a minute and a half between sets, increase this to three minutes. I've taken as much as five minutes of rest between sets, which ends up being 20 minutes rest for one exercise. And if you rest this long on all three main exercises, you'll spend over an hour just sitting recovering. At some point, you have to shorten those rest times back down and realize every time you reduce your rest by 30 seconds, that's progress. The second method when you hit a plateau is to deload, reducing the weight by 10% and gradually increasing it again each workout. The main focus of a 5x5 is to get you strong and it will build muscle but this is secondary to overall strength. I'm interested in hypertrophy with strength and I want to improve my aesthetics, particularly my arms and the balance between the biceps and triceps. The exercises Stronglist 5x5 initially add in for arms are a better back and chest exercise, at least the way I like to do them, and that's chin-ups and dips. Chin-ups address the lack of a vertical pull movement in the program, and dips, when done with a forward lean, are an effective chest builder. These exercises are added in for three sets, with dips in the A workout and chin-ups being in the B. Once you can do 10 reps on all sets with body weight, you drop down to five repetitions and start adding one to two pounds every workout. You can also add two sets of curls and skull crushers. These are effective arm builders. With each exercise you add, the workouts get longer and Strong Lifts does suggest adding a fourth day, making it a designated arm day doing pull-ups, dips, curls, and skull crushers. I like the idea of expanding from three days a week to four or five days, but I'd organize the exercises differently. This leaves abs, calves, and I don't feel there's enough hamstring work. As long as you have time, there's no reason you can't add exercises to cover these body parts. For that matter, after the core five exercises, all the other exercises are accessory work and can be changed around for different movements to create variety 
and address muscle imbalances. A 5x5 isn't a perfect program, but it's a great way to develop a strong foundation and build muscle. In my dumbbell variation, I'm enjoying the continual challenge of trying to add weight or another rep every workout. If you'd like to try a 5x5 workout, watch this video next for the complete beginner's guide and keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.